Hey guys, I just wanted to let you know that every Olivo workout is available at realanimetraining.com as a downloadable QRG uh, that you can save to your phone so that you are never at a loss for what to do for this program. You can find the link to that in the description. Hey guys, I'm the Anime Trainer and today we're going to complete one of my favorite series that I've done so far. If you guys have been following the channel for the last couple of weeks, you know that we've been posting the workouts for Oliva from Baki. Today we're going to show you how to put this whole program together and to address some questions that you may have regarding the training, especially as how it relates to the character of Oliva. It should be no secret if you've seen the other Oliva videos that this character is based on the real life person of Sergio Oliva, who was a monumental bodybuilder during the 1960s. His training was insane and produced a mountainous monster of a man. Before we go any further though, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon so you can get all of the real anime training workouts as they become available. Now let's go ahead and get into Olva's full program. Quick disclaimer here, as I've said before, this is a very difficult series of workouts due to the high volume present. So do yourself a favor and if you are new, start way lighter than you think you need to and just focus on getting in the reps, gradually getting used to the volume. The fortunate part here is that the baseline of the program is very simple. Monday, chest and back. Tuesday, shoulders and arms. Wednesday, abs and legs. Thursday, chest, shoulders and lats. Friday, arms and lats. Saturday, abs and legs, part two. Sunday's a rest day, thank God. And the great part is that the simplicity of this program will keep you from getting too mixed up. Now, let's address the progression of these workouts. During each of these sessions, there are some exercises that are based on the percentage of your one rep max of that exercise. Your one rep max is the most amount of weight that you can lift with good form one time. Some other exercises require you to just use an increasingly heavier weight, as long as you hit the rep scheme correctly. So, let's explain how to progress on each. First, with the exercises using percentages of one rep max. If you are able to complete all of the reps on a given exercise at the current percentage of your 1RM each time the exercise comes up during that week, I want you to add five pounds to your 1RM calculation the next week. For instance, to make it simple, if you were to have a one rep max of 200 pounds on the bench press, your weights would look like this for the sets. That's pretty simple based on the percentages listed here on the QRG that we have right here. So what do the weights look like next week since you succeeded here and on the second chest day of the week since it uses the same weights? Well, you just add five pounds to the 1RM calculation and use the same percentages from the QRG. So new calculation is taken from 205 pounds instead of 200. Set one, 71.5 rounded down is 70 pounds. Set two, 82 rounded down is 80 pounds. Set three, 102.5 rounded up is 105 pounds. And the last set, set seven, 143.5 rounded up is 145. You'll see that it's not much different than the previous week. Just a small amount of increase over seven sets of eight will definitely feel different though. So what do you do if you fail to complete the reps listed on the next week? Well, you just keep those weights during the next week's session. This prevents you from trying to add too much weight too quickly. And in case you are confused about when to round up or round down, you round down when the weight is less than 2.5 at the end of the weight. And you round up when it is 2.5 or higher. Let's talk about the weights that don't have this 1RM calculation. Although, if you know what you can barely get 10 reps with, you can calculate your 1RM, but on accessory exercises, after you're already tired, I think that method is a little inaccurate, and what I'm going to tell you now is probably better. As an example, standing barbell curls and lying triceps extensions from Oliva's Tuesday workout both save 5 sets of 5 with an increasingly heavier weight. The last rep on the last set should be difficult, but not so much that your form degrades. Let's say that your sets look like this. First set, 45 pounds, second set, 65 pounds, third set, 85 pounds, fourth set, 95 pounds, last set, 100 pounds. This is your baseline. You can see that the first set in this example is 45% of the last set. Whatever you start with, try to keep your proportions relatively the same as you increase. 
If you are able to complete this workout, increase the last set by 2.5 or 5 pounds depending on what the smallest increment you can actually increase it by is. The rest of the set should grow in proportion to the last set. For instance, if the fifth set is now 105, the sets would look like this using the same rounding up or down as before. The first set is 47.25, rounded down to 45. Second set is 68.25, rounded up to 70. Third set is 89.25, rounded up to 90. Fourth set is 99.75, rounded up to 100. And the fifth set is 105. This is just an example and you may need to play around with your baseline at first to find a different example for yourself, but the principle remains the same. If you are unable to complete the weights listed, you have those same weights next week. If you stagnate on your accessory list for two to three weeks, don't freak out. As long as your big lifts are moving up, the accessories will improve over time if you've got a sticking point like that. You just have to be consistent. Progressions are done. Now let's talk about deload. Deloading is the idea of giving yourself a rest by either decreasing your volume or your intensity for a short time. This may not be necessary at the very beginning of your training, but I do recommend programming deloads if you have been consistently lifting for at least six months, especially on a program like this. A very simple way to program a deload is to do so every eighth week. Cut your weights or your reps completely in half for one week. That will allow you to still get movement in and do all the movements that you've been doing up to this point, but allow your body to catch up on some recovery. So that may mean only doing seven sets of four reps on bench press instead of seven sets of eight, or it may look like seven sets of eight with half the weight that you normally use. It's entirely up to you which one you'd like to do or if you don't want to deload at all, but unless you're on some sort of chemical assistance, I do recommend that you deload occasionally. Let's address a couple of elephants in the room. First, there is a serious lack of hinging movements, i.e deadlifts in Oliva's program. He does do bent over rows, so he does have to maintain a hinged position while lifting, but that's about it. All his leg work comes entirely through various types of squatting. Now, while that's perfectly fine to do in your program if it suits your goals, he was obviously awesome as a bodybuilder without them, the character of Oliva has specifically been shown to deadlift. So along with some other things that we see Oliva do, I'm going to add just a little spice to this program. All of his feats. At the end of each workout, there will be one of five feats that you will have to perform. This means that you will do one of those feats two times in a week, since all of his program is six days a week. Let's talk about those feats. Number one, cardio. Oh no, you thought you were going to escape having to do cardio in this program? Well, here's the thing. Oliva doesn't really seem to run anywhere in the series. He just sort of moves like an unstoppable force in the direction of wherever he's going until he gets there. So we're going to do some cardio that he's definitely done that we've seen him do, which is climbing stairs for 20 whole minutes. I know, bros, that sounds like a lot of cardio, but just take it easy the first few times and try to keep moving the entire time. You can increase the intensity gradually over time. Uh, if you don't have access to a step mill, you can just walk on the treadmill on an incline. That's perfectly fine. But do your best not to hold on to the treadmill while you do it. You want to make sure that you are still maintaining core tightness and standing straight up and not leaning back while holding on to the treadmill because that's not really doing work for you. Number two, the helicopter ab crunch. That's right. We see Oliva do a whole ab crunch with a helicopter as weight. And we're gonna mimic that with a cable machine. You can do this movement from standing or kneeling. I prefer to change it up because it feels like it hits differently in each position. Using a cable machine and a rope attachment, push your hips back and squeeze your abdominals to pull down the weight stack. We're gonna do five sets of 10 with an increasingly heavier weight with 60 to 90 seconds of rest between each set. And then we're gonna finish on the last set with a drop set, meaning that at the end of that set, you will drop the weight one increment at a time and do reps until you have to drop the weight again because the burn is too much. You're welcome. Number three, the girlfriend carries. Before his fight with Che, Oliva carries his sizable girlfriend while she is laying on a huge bed. He then picks her up in both arms, explaining that the entire reason that he got this strong to begin with was in order to do this very movement. 
To mimic this, we will be doing five sets of a yoke carry and zercher holds. For the yoke carry, you can use an awkward weight like a big tire, a sandbag, or just use a barbell. The only catch is that you have to pick it up from the ground. You will then carry it 25 meters and put it down. Next, you will pick up a barbell in the zercher hold position, which is carrying the weight in the crux of your elbows. If this hurts, wrap the bar in a towel or a pad to keep it from digging in. You'll hold this position for at least 30 seconds and at most 60 seconds. Then you will head back and start over with the yoke carry. You are going to start lighter on both of these movements just to get used to them, especially at the end of all of your workouts, and then you're going to gradually add weight over the weeks and months of training. A little bit at a time. Number four, motorcycle toss. Oliva drives up into the Arizona State Prison with his motorcycle and throws it so hard that he destroys the motorcycle just for the heck of it so that he can get a new one. We're going to mimic this feat with two exercises. Five sets of ten landmine anti-rotations and five medicine ball side tosses per side. For the landmine anti-rotations, place a barbell in the corner of a room or a specifically made slot for this movement. Hold the end of the bar with both hands extended above your head and bring the weight to one side without twisting the waist or moving the hips, and then back to the other side to complete the rep. Your core should be tight here. For the medicine ball side tosses, you'll use a lighter medicine ball to begin with, and you will twist to throw the weight as far as possible. If you don't have an inside space for this, like I couldn't do it in a crowded gym, you can also accomplish the same thing with a rock, which you can see me do here in the Armstrong workout. What, Keely? You can do all five sets of the anti-rotations first, and then the medicine ball toss after, or you can alternate back and forth. But you're gonna wanna rest 60 seconds between each exercise. All right, and number five, deadlifts. Biscuit Oliva is stated to be able to deadlift 500 kilograms. That's a massive deadlift. So we're gonna at least put the exercise in the character's full program. 10 reps with the bar to warm up, and then you will add 20 pounds to the bar. You're gonna do one rep, add 20 pounds to the bar, do one rep, add 20 pounds to the bar, do one rep, and you're gonna continue in this fashion until you're unable to complete the weight that you have loaded on the bar with good form. That doesn't mean, oh, I picked it up, but my back looked like a rainbow. It means good form, flat back, moving with the hips, your rest period is the time it takes you to change out the weights in between each set, so you're welcome not to rush that aspect of it. Now let's talk about the form more in depth. Walk up to the bar so that your shins are in contact with the bar. With your back straight, hinge at the hips to reach the bar. If your hamstring flexibility will not allow for this, bend your knees slightly as you push your butt back to hinge. Feet just under your hips, hands about shoulder width apart. Shoulders should be in front of the bar and your back should be parallel to the ground. With your hands gripping the bar, lean back until you feel the bar start to pull against your hands. At this moment, drive your heels through the floor and squeeze your glutes to push your hips forward. Keep the core super tight as you lift to full extension of the hips. Your back should not round during this movement. At the top of the movement, you should be in normal standing posture. Push your hips back to put the bar back down. If you are hitting your knees on the way up or down, you're doing one of two things. You're thinking about moving the bar and not your hips, or you're thinking about bending your knees first to put the weight down instead of moving with your hips. All right, when you put the feats into the program, it looks something like this. Week one, Monday, cardio. Tuesday, helicopter ab crunch. Wednesday, the girlfriend carries. Thursday, the motorcycle toss. Friday, deadlifts. And Saturday, back to cardio. The next week is starting with Monday, Helicopter Crunch, Tuesday, The Girlfriend Carries, Wednesday, Motorcycle Toss, Thursday, Deadlifts, Friday, Cardio, Saturday, Back to the App Crunch. I think you get the idea here. And that's it. That's the full program for Oliva from Baki. If you're just looking to mimic Sergio Oliva, the feet section is not necessary for this program. But if you want to do the feats, start very easy on them and build over time. If you stay consistent and follow the rules outlined in this program, many years from now, you will be much bigger and stronger. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this series. 
Thanks for watching, and an extra special thanks to all our patrons. I'm the Anime Trainer, and until next time, good luck, and train hard.